there's one thing this pandemic situation is showing us, it's that we're all connected. And on some level, we're all suffering. But we're also ready to fight our way through. In this series, I'm speaking to people I call friends, people I respect, people I want to see do well. Because in the end, we all have to carry on. And it's better if we carry on together. Tanya, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Are you surviving? I am surviving. I've been taking up landscaping, which I'm finding is extremely therapeutic. <laughs> is, is that helping you to maintain some sense of sanity? There's something about digging a hole and like ripping up weeds that is helping to maintain my sanity. Yeah. I, I like <laughs> to do that myself. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the physical, the physical exhaustion helps for somebody like me who constantly, my brain is like nonstop. So yeah. it just puts me in a very mellow place. Okay. And have you done a lot of landscaping in the past or is this something new to you? This is something new. Generally, yeah. I hire out for this kind of thing. <laughs> but being as you have a lot of time at home. Yep. Yeah. I've got yeah. irises. If you want irises, I have irises. I have about 10 million hostas that I'm working on splitting up right now. Yeah. They're everywhere, which is great because they're extremely easy to take care of. Yeah. But and they just keep coming back. Kind of exactly. like my irises. Yes. <laughs> I have a couple of those too. Yeah. Somewhere I'm like looking. But yeah. yeah, I've got a couple of those too. And some miscellaneous stuff that I have no idea what it is, but... We'll find out soon. I hopefully. also have recently taken up uh, houseplants, yeah. uh, and I'm very excited that I haven't killed them all yet. I've successfully, thus far, split an aloe plant yeah. and am propagating some other uh, plants as well. I'm very pleased. It's the one thing that is giving me some sanity through this. You know, it's funny that you bring up the aloe plant. Um, I was never, I never had a green thumb. My mom always did. And she always had these amazing, beautiful house plants growing up. And I was always jealous. And she would give me the easiest plants to take care of. And I would kill them. <laughs> me, so, me too. This is, this is a really funny story. And I'm sure it's just because aloe is like very easy to take care of. But my ex-mother-in-law got me this little tiny aloe plant. It's probably like this big. Yeah. Um, when the salon opened as like an opening gift, that thing has multiplied so many times. And I always feel like me and this aloe are running on the same parallels. Like since I opened the salon, <laughs> like every difficult time I've gone through, it's kind of like died down and I needed to give it TLC and then it's like come back up again. Yeah. And I always break, I always propagate it and give the little babies to like the girls at the salon. So they all have like a piece of this, this significant aloe, which is actually awesome. doing very well right now. So everything will be fine. <laughs> yeah, as long as the aloe is surviving. Yes, as long as that thing keeps kicking, we're fine. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you would, for people that don't know you, would you just uh, introduce yourself and what you do? Yeah. So my name is Tanya Hart. I own Oomph Salon in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Um, it's a pretty awesome place. I've got about 20 employees, and we've grown pretty significantly over the past almost six years that we've been open. We're uh, now on the uh, West End. Okay. Um, and you, not only did you move into a new spot, uh, what, within the last two years? Two, June 2018. Okay. Uh, but almost immediately you expanded. Yeah. So June 2018, we moved into our new spot in the West End in the Frank Jones building. And it was probably fall of 2018 where I realized that we had already run out of space. So we, or I, started to uh, brainstorm different ways that we could do things more efficiently, the layout, and then ultimately I had to expand to the second floor, which we opened in October of 2019. Awesome. And uh, so how, how has it been going? I mean, so before specifically <laughs> before uh, yeah. all of this this uh the outbreak how has it been going um salon has been going good we continue to grow very steadily um we had a little bit of a tough like when we were going through the expansion um things were a little tough uh but i think that's when you grow to a certain level it's hard to maintain some of that 
culture while you're going through it because change is innately hard for people. Um, but once we got through that and then like, once we got through fall and the holiday season, things have just been cruising. Like we've had our biggest January and February ever, like huge numbers, like bigger than December. So we're on a really good track. And you, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, you, you've you just been hitting milestone after milestone as far as revenues. Yes. Uh, and just growing. We Yeah, we, you know, started, I think the first year I filed, it was like 50,000 was our gross sales for the year. Um, we ended last year with like almost 1.5 million. So for a salon, that's pretty decent because it's in a, it's in like the top, like 5% of what salons are actually doing out there. Amazing. And yeah. it's really kind of an experience when, when you walk into the salon, my daughter, five years yeah. old, had her first haircut yep. experience in your salon. Yes, I have the picture to prove it. Yeah. Um, she is so cute, and now she's like a loyal oomph babe. She, like, uh, she, comes, she she comes in frequently. Like she's just, we need to get her like a little t-shirt or something. Yeah, uh, I am not opposed to just continuing it uh, throughout yeah. her <laughs> <laughs> her life and bringing her back. But yeah, um, tell me how uh, how your employees have been faring through this. I mean, it's tough. Suddenly. Revenue drops off. Clients yeah. can't come in. Um, yeah. What what has been the effect, or you know, what's been the good and bad with your your employees? Oh, you know, my employees are like my greatest asset, and I apologize if I start to like tear up when I think about it. Like nobody saw this coming, and I kind of had just found out about the coronavirus about like two or three weeks prior to like the shit show really happening. And it was like the Friday before we decided to close, like we were watching Trump's address to the, the, the union. Um, and I think it just kind of like hit hard. I was like, we're going to be in a position where we're going to have to close. And so I started talking to everybody about that. It's so like really, try to mentally prepare them um, and then started to do my own research on like what we were going to be able to do. And then when Sununu decided to shut down restaurants and bars, it was like a no brainer to me that I had to shut down the salon too. Um, but that was only after I found out that they could file for unemployment. And while the unemployment wages are not great, it's something. Um, and I think it helps them mentally to know that, a lot of people are in the same position as them. Mm. Um, and also being a commission based salon, not a lot of salons are commission based. A lot of salons are 1099 or self-employed people and they're having a really tough time uh, gaining unemployment. So I think my staff is really appreciative of the fact that they work for an employer. Um, but it has been hard. I actually, while I'm on this call with you, one of my employees is texting me um, just because she's been having issues with her unemployment. But it's, we're all navigating this shit storm together. Can I say that? Uh, yes. We okay. are a, uh, a family that says it as it is. Okay. All right. <laughs> Good. I swear a lot. <laughs> You're not alone. Yeah. Um, what, tell me what kind of support you've been getting from, you know, the channels that you've been investigating from government channels, programs. Uh, yeah. what, what is really available to you as a business owner? So it's nothing, <sighs> nothing is really, <laughs> nothing is really available to me right now. So I am self-employed. I own a business. However, I pay myself a salary through the business. So technically I should be able to file unemployment, no problem and gain something for myself. I, for some reason, my pay is being held and I'm not getting any benefits. And it's impossible to get a hold of anybody right now at the unemployment office. And I plan on once we open again, sending them a bunch of flowers or something, because there's my understanding is that there's not that many people working at the New Hampshire unemployment office. So I understand um, other things that I've been looking into. Uh, I have a good friend who works at Live Oak uh, Bank, which is a small business bank. Um, and they specialize in stuff like this. And he's been a really amazing resource. His name is Jonathan Smith. Um, 
he was kind of walking me through the economic disaster loan SBA. I filed for that. Um, I filed for the $10,000 advance. Um, and then I applied for the uh, Paycheck Protection Program. So all of these resources are really interesting. A lot of my friends that have gotten approval from the SBA loan have not been getting the $10,000 grant. They're capping those loans at $15,000, which my rent in Portsmouth, having a 4,000 square foot space is around that amount, if I'm being completely transparent. Um, and then, so that doesn't really help at all. And then the Paycheck Protection Program is something that I feel like a lot of people were leaning into because it can be 75% of it can be forgiven or 100% of it can be forgiven. You need to use 75% of it towards your payroll in order for that to happen. So they're changing the information about that program almost every single day. So right now, if your bank approves it, they have to fund it within 10 days. So you have 10 days to make a decision if you're going to take on this loan. And then as soon as they fund the loan and the loan ends up in your bank account, um, then it's like the following eight weeks from that date is when it needs to be utilized. So for me, being a non-essential business where I can't open my doors, I'm really running the risk of like, I could hire my staff back on, um, I could pay my rent, my utilities and everything with it, but there's something about free money from the government that always poses red flags for me. So if by chance I was not able to pull it off and they pulled some red tape and they were like, oh, this is not going to be forgiven because of X, Y, Z, I am now, my loan amount based on my payroll would be $173,000. And you don't have to pay it for six months, but then after that you have 18 months to pay it back. At 1% interest rate, which is like great, but having 18 months to pay back $173,000 loan is like $9,600 a month. So the best case scenario, um, my bank is a little slow and they haven't even processed that application yet, even though it's every other bank is like getting them done in a day or two. Mm. Um, best possible solution would be that I got it towards the end of this month. And Sununu said, we can go back to work on May 4th, just like we've been talking about. And it would be a no brainer because I could take everybody back on. I could pay myself. I haven't taken a paycheck in almost two months. Um, I could pay myself. Our lives could be back to normal. All of that would be forgiven. And then all of the income that everybody's making can go back into the savings that are being depleted. And that is basically it. But the SBA loan, the other ones, it's like dropping a penny in a well and like yeah. listening for the echo because there's just nobody's hearing anything. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, uh, you know, I, I haven't really, I don't have anybody that depends on me other than family. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't imagine the, the added stress, not only being a business owner running a successful business, but then also having the, the weight of responsibility for all these people that you really genuinely, I assume you genuinely love them and want to oh see them God. doing well. <laughs> They're literally my family. Um, you know, they always say that you should set boundaries with your employees. And I think that we have pretty healthy boundaries, but you know, some of my team, like we've been together through marriages and now mm. babies and it is, it's, you know, I always look at to them like the extension of my children. Cause I never had girls. I have two boys. So now I have 20 young women yeah. <laughs> and it's great. Um, most of the time, <laughs> but yeah, it, it is. It's really hard knowing that I have to try to figure out a way to provide for my family as well as navigate through all of this stuff with my employees um, and try to troubleshoot and make sure they're taken care of. Um, especially when there are so many unknown factors. And for me, I'm a person who works really hard to not have gray area. Yeah. There's something a gray area that is a very uncomfortable state for me to be in. So I like to be like, yes, no, whatever. But yeah, it's a lot. It's you strike lot. me as a very focused, driven woman. Um, uh, I won't sh 
show you my kitchen table, but I am, I'm very driven and I, I feel like I have that true entrepreneurial spirit where I have a lot of ideas. So I do yeah. have to sometimes like reel myself in, but I am focused and passionate, I guess is the best word to describe it. And you've also built something. I mean, it, it's tangible. Yeah. I remember when you were on Court Street yeah. and walking by because, you know, I would often do that and just kind of peering in being like, that's interesting what's going on in there. But <laughs> this was yeah. long before we'd ever been introduced. Yeah. Um, but to see the the growth, the expansion, and to uh, to hear about you know where things were were going before all of this it it really yeah. i don't know why but i really enjoy seeing people do well like that to me is the uh the greatest joy that i get out of my relationships yeah. is when i see my friends and loved ones doing well no you know i feel the same way too and i it took me kind of a few years to accept like my position um, in the lives of my team and also like in the community. So like through this, I've been like a little bit of a community leader, like, you know, spreading the information about the small business stuff. I've had a lot of people reach out to me. Um, I mentor, I feel like a lot of other business owners and it is, it's that exciting. Like I all want us to win together. Mm -hmm. um, there's something, it just gives your life like a little bit of purpose and happiness to see people doing well. And it's, for me, I feel like maybe just growing up with nothing, it's really hard to like, oh, you don't have anything? Like, look how far I've come. Like, everybody can achieve this. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's it's a weird space to be in because I'm generally a very happy, positive person. And at first you're like, oh, I have all this time. I'm going to like hammer through my to-do list, the things that have been on, like I've been working on my education stuff, creating yeah. online formats and keynotes, <laughs> <laughs> presentations, you know, which is good because I feel like we can prepare if we need to be out a little bit longer to have um, additional education for my team and stuff like that online. But then some days it's just like the wind gets knocked out of your sails and you're like, I'm going to do nothing. I don't want to read. I don't want to landscape. I just want to be still and like try to like not even think about the situation yeah. because outside of the business, it's like you start thinking about things like worldly, you know, and it's, it's a little bananas. Uh, so in addition to landscaping, what are yeah. you doing to stay sane and to to maintain that that sense of community? Yeah, so I have a Zoom call with my team every Monday morning, um, and then I have a separate Zoom call with my education team on Tuesdays. Um, on Fridays, the girls and I typically get together on Zoom and just have like a little party. Mm -hmm. um, I just, you know, actually being on social media in a way has been good and bad. Um, what else am I doing to stay sane and be a part of the community? Just being there, I guess, like existing and yeah. being open to people reaching out. Um, typically, I have like 300 text messages that I need to respond to and 100 Facebook messages. And I've just been making sure that I'm taking the time to do all of that right now. So, yeah. Well, uh, I wish you the best. Um, what advice would you have for other small business owners uh, that are, you know, completely lost and unsure of where to even begin? I think taking the time to get out of that fear state, out of the panic, because everybody is in this situation. And just really like taking a moment to go back to your why and like why you decided to get into business and what you're doing and not to make any decisions that are fear based. Like, oh my God, I'm going to be broke. I need to take out this loan. Like, don't do anything that's going to put yourself into like further debt if you don't need to, but maybe start to like brain map different ways that you can be innovative and either like upon opening how you can, you know, hustle a little bit more money, like other things that you can do. Um, or just curbing work altogether 
and just like reading a book, like spending time with your kids, watching the movie you always wanted to watch, break up hostas in the yard. <laughs> break up hostas. Yeah. Break up hostas. Replant them everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Those are tough little buggers. Oh my gosh. They're insane. Yeah. But yeah. And you know, like just take the time, like for me, when I'm at work, usually Monday mornings are very quiet for me. So I would go to the salon and, and like I would write a list of everything that I wanted to get done that week. Um, and maybe like just doing the same thing now. Like I think it's a really hard time for people to focus on small things because there's a lot that can really overwhelm you. So if you just make a list and like prioritize some of the stuff on the list and then just chip like, you know, check off a few things and that will make you feel like purposeful and that you're actually yeah. getting stuff done instead of like, like walking around, like, <laughs> yeah. what, what do I do? What do I do? What do yeah. I do? What do I do? <laughs> well, yeah. uh, thank you so much for taking the time with me today and thank all of you for checking in again. Uh, yeah. be sure to like, <laughs> and subscribe. And, uh, until next time, carry on. Carry on. Bye, guys. Be well. <laughs> uh, and thank you all for joining back again. Uh, and uh, let me let me start that over, okay? <laughs> uh.